Hello friends, this is Vinesh Sharma and welcome to my first video blog. In this video blog, I would like to talk about the recently introduced Virtual Land Controller in 7.3 release. So until today, to 7.2 release, all our Virtual Land Controller was running on dedicated hardware like 5500 series, 2100 series, 2000 or Wisdom on CAT 65K. Now it's a dedicated effort to bring a virtual controller which which will run on an industrial standard hardware like VMware, ESXi, ESX4 or 5.1. There is a lot of advantages of using virtual controller because the end user is not locked into one single piece of hardware. We need to use VMware with specific hardware requirement and we need to make sure that we, we get checked on uh, VMware side to make sure that the VMware is running on a, a supported platform. So if the controller is not running on a supported platform, it will not work properly. Another advantage is Cisco customers will be able to save costs because now they can run multiple controllers on a virtual machine. The user can run multiple instances on a single box and this will save costs in data center. Another advantage we can, we can talk is we can run redundancy between two virtual controllers on the same box. So we need to use VMware components that are relevant to the virtual controller like vSphere and vCenter server. The vSphere is like a standalone client and vSphere is a virtualization infrastructure package from VMware. This gives us the ability to create and connect to the virtual machines, make changes to the virtual machines. vCenter server provides a scalable way for the management of the platform. Uh, v VMware hypervisor is going to control the physical disk, access to the CPU, and which will allow us to run virtualization. It also allows to create multiple instances on one machine, but we cannot use hypervisor via console. So all the, mon all the management of the base platform will be done by a vSphere client or vSphere vCenter server in order to access the console. We need to adjust the memory or disk size, we can use it. Now, what the virtual machine essentially does is it creates a software container and each software container will represent how we are going to create a CPU. So every software container contains its own virtual software-based CPU, which includes your RAM, hard drive, and network NIC. On top of the virtual machine, the, the software controller will be running the same way it does for the physical machine. So the virtual machine, the virtual controller software talks to the hypervisor instead of CPU, and now the hypervisor will check which CPU or this needs to be engaged to the request sent by the controller software. In the physical box, the software directly talks to CPU, but in virtual machine controllers, the software will be talking to the hypervisor. The same goes when it needs to access the memory, it needs to access the hardware. So the hypervisor is the interface between your physical box and the virtual controller software. So that was a brief introduction on the new virtual LAN controller. Please share your comments and also do check, do check my new document which I have posted on virtual LAN controller on CSE. Thanks.